Hey guys, and welcome to this edition of Scruff's Garage. Uh, today's video is talking about changing the clutch fluid. Uh, now, if you've watched my videos for a while, uh, you may remember that one of my early videos, I showed you how to change the clutch fluid uh, using what's simply called the Ranger method, uh, but essentially that's uh, sucking out the old fluid, refilling it, pumping the pe pedal a million times, and repeating the process, trying to move some of the fluid uh, from the reservoir down into the slave cylinder and get some of the old gunk uh, back out. It's a very tedious process and it really doesn't work that well, but it's kind of the only option uh, you have in the stock setup. <clears throat> um, if you notice when I installed uh, my clutch, uh, I also installed a Tick Performance remote uh, slave cylinder uh, bleeder line and it has a speed bleeder on the end of it as well. And this thing makes your life so much easier uh, when it comes to changing the clutch fluid or bleeding the system if you've got an air pocket in there. Um, but obviously the fluid needs to be bled uh, and changed every so often. Uh, the GM hydraulics are just notorious for getting clutch dust past the seals in the slave cylinder uh, and the clutch fluid gets dirty uh, very quickly. So since this is some basic maintenance that I was going to do already, I thought I would show it to you and show you just how easy uh, it is to use this speed bleeder. So obviously this line is run down uh, to the slave cylinder down inside the, the bell housing. This end has a uh, speed bleeder. So the way that works, when you crack it open, there's a essentially a one-way check valve in there. So that as you press down on the brake on the clutch pedal, it will push fluid out. But then when you let off, the check valve closes um, and prevents you from sucking air back into the system. So pretty much it becomes a one-man job of just press the clutch pedal in, it'll push fluid out, you let it up, uh, and repeat. Of course, the first step uh, will be to take the fluid out. We'll suck out any of the old fluid. That way we don't have to push it all the way through the system. And make sure you have plenty of paper towels. Uh, obviously clutch fluid uh, or brake fluid is bad for your paint. Um, so if you're getting it on there, clean it up um, immediately. So I've just got a, a jug and then I'm gonna suck. If you don't have one of these uh, automotive uh, siphons uh, you can get them on Amazon uh, just a few dollars and they work really well you can see the fluid the clutch fluid is a little dirty but it's not not horrible and that got the majority in there so I'm going to take a, a paper towel and soak up the rest of it and that will also allow me to uh, wipe out the bottom of the little reservoir uh, cup. Sediment will settle to the bottom. Okay, so got the old fluid sucked out and cleaned out the reservoir. Alright, so I've topped it off with some fresh clean fluid. Uh, you don't even have to put the uh, cap back on. And then of course I've got my uh, brake bleeder uh, little bottle. It's got this handy dandy hose. So this is a 11 millimeter and a 14 millimeter. And we'll just crack open the uh, the speed bleeder here. There we go. Uh, now it's as simple as getting the car. I'll pump the clutch pedal a few times. Uh, that will start moving the fluid out of the reservoir down through the system uh, and the old stuff will be pushed out into my catch cup here. Uh, I'll do that a few times. We'll keep an eye on the fluid level in the reservoir. As it gets low, uh, we'll top it off. Okay, that was eight pumps of the clutch pedal and that's got me pretty close to the bottom so we'll top it off again definitely don't want to get it so low that you suck air into the system 
uh, or you have to keep bleeding. Okay, so I've run a fair amount of fluid through here. So we'll top off uh, the reservoir cup now. Okay, uh, make sure the boot uh, little diaphragm that goes down into the reservoir is nice and clean. Make sure it's seated properly. Don't want to tear the boot. There we go. Got the reservoir cap. We'll close our bleeder line. Okay, there you go. You can see the fluid that came out. Uh, it's a little discolored, but honestly, it's not too bad. You can see how black and dirty uh, this clutch fluid is. And this has only been in there maybe six months, uh, maybe a thousand miles. Part of that was uh, some track driving. Uh, this clutch fluid has just under 2,000 miles on it. Um, obviously everything in the system was new. Um, a new clutch, new slave cylinder. And I bled the clutch fluid before I went to the dyno. Uh, so this has about 1,900 miles of street driving on it. A little dirty, but doesn't actually look too bad. Um, but I do it from time to time as preventive uh, maintenance. I did an oil change today as well. So I thought I'd go ahead and do this just to see what it looked like and help me gauge uh, how frequently I need to do it. Uh, but honestly, with the speed bleeder, changing the clutch fluid or bleeding the system uh, becomes easier than doing an oil change, uh, right? Because I ran the, the bleed line up here. It's right here by the reservoir. Uh, it's really easy to get to. It's a uh, it's a one man job. Obviously, you can you saw me do the the whole thing here. So, uh, you know, obviously, it would be difficult to install one of these if you're not doing a clutch. But if you are doing a clutch, um, absolutely install a new slave cylinder and absolutely install one of these remote bleeders. Uh, it makes life so much easier, um, especially if you use your Corvette for performance driving autocross or road course work um, just anything like that being able to change the clutch fluid um, is just part of your, your regular maintenance so I highly recommend one of these probably the best 50 bucks uh, you'll ever spend on anything related to your clutch so hopefully you found this helpful if you have any questions uh, feel free to ask in the comments and as always thanks for tuning in to Scruff's Garage we'll see you next time